the Joe Rogan experience. When you put together the Snowden movie, what what was your aim? Like, what what were you trying to get out of that film? Well, I knew it was an important story because surveillance had. Ne- I never imagined surveillance at this level. I realized that it could be every with this new technology we had that it could be everywhere. I mean, beyond my imagination, beyond anybody's imagination. And when I did the movie, it was to reveal what he revealed, which was shocking in its implications. We went even further, and we showed how the control of information, the use of information, can destabilize many regimes. And they went after regime change, became the new, the mo- new, new modus operandi for the United States. Mm. It was okay to change regimes. You know, we were good at it. And the way we did it with soft power, subtle, what happened in Brazil a couple of years ago, typical. You know, the whole forcing out the president of mm-hmm. Lula, getting rid of the uh, Dilma, bringing in this, well, this other guy came in from the right, but essentially Brazil was completely changed, completely changed. They're still working at it in Venezuela. They, they, got, they worked in Bolivia. They, they, got, they got rid of the guy illegally, Honduras. Libya. Libya, you know, Libya. That's was, the most uh, spectacular failure, right? Yeah. Well, that was one of one. Yeah, of. it's a failed state now. But it was a yeah. But uh, that that comes down to our policy in the Middle East. Too. Yeah. When you make a film like that, um, how hard is it to put together? I mean, the Snowden film is so disturbing because it's it's current, right? We're we're dealing with things that are happening right now. Yeah. yeah. How how hard is it to put it down and, and make it this dramatic piece that's going to be enjoyed? It was hard. It was hard. You have to judge that for yourself. I like the movie. I think it's a it's a th- it's tense and it keeps the uh, keeps the tension throughout the movie. Uh, I, of course, I got to know Snowden very well. I went to Moscow several times and met with him. Oh, really? Yeah. And, uh, how does he, that get arranged? He, well, uh, do you have to it, put it, a bandana over your eyes. No, <laughs> I've done that too. But that was have a, you? Yeah, that was a terrorist groups in the Middle East. But what was that for? That was for a, a persona non grata. It was a documentary I did about uh, in two thousand three four about uh, the uh, leader of the uh, PLO. Whoa, Arafat. Yeah, I got to really. Meet, yeah, I did an interview with him. Yeah. Wow, what was that like? I was more, I didn't, because of my connections, I had more contact with the Israeli side. I was in Ramallah. So, I mean, I was talking to Netanyahu before he was prime minister. I was talking to the leader, the ex-prime minister, the prime minister, all that. And then I went to Ramallah, which was the capital of the uh, PLO there. And uh, actually, I was there the day the uh, Israelis, the, the day before the Israelis came in and knocked out that knocked out the, the lights and everything. Wow. They, they isolated uh, Arafat and the Ramallah Pal. We, we got out at the last second, actually. <sighs> but uh, we, were seeing Ram- we were seeing Arafat and uh, t- showing his side of the equation, showing what he was thinking. So as part of that, part of that I went to see a terrorist group. They, they became quite famous later. They're, they're well known. They were young guys, and they had their masks, and I went at midnight. I was more scared of the uh, Israelis than them. Because really? the Israelis could be tracking with their all their they have all this equipment, you know, blow the shit out of us when we're in there. I was, that's what I'm scared of. So the Israelis were, were dangerous. You thought the Israelis would do that, knowing that you were a filmmaker? Oh, I don't know what they're thinking. You know, no, I mean, I'm not sure they they knew what we were doing. We saw they saw people going into a underground bunker oh. with people with masks and uh, yeah, <laughs> who knows what they're thinking. They have great reconnaissance though. You have to be careful when you fight them. And so they uh, requested that you wear a mask and when they transported not the, you. No, not the... Not, not the Israelis, but I mean uh, the, the Yeah, terrorists. when they transported me, yeah. yes. But when I got there, I took it off. Did you... But, but that decision, was that a tough decision to make to let them no, not for drive me. you around with a mask on? No, I was very anxious to meet them. They were... They were... Uh, well, they call them terrorists, but, you know, who's a terrorist these days? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. You know, we can bomb other countries to death and call ourselves the good guys, but we kill a lot of civilians around the world with our bombing. This, that, that's true, but this message that you have, that you, you, you're not just a guy who makes movies, but you're a guy who makes movies and also a guy who's very outspoken about all of these issues in the world. 
Uh, yeah, Do yeah, those yeah, two yeah. get in the way of each other sometimes? Of course. Yeah? Of course, yeah. There was people I think sometimes my outspokenness overshadows my work. and It might be true for them, but... Well, they the try to label you both yeah, ways, too, which yeah. is really fascinating to the me. World is, the world is complicated. And I, uh, I did speak out, and some people think that's... They say I'm a filmmaker, stick to being that. But, you know, it's very hard if you care. You know this. Well, it's it's very important that you don't, and I'm glad that you have the courage to not stick to that. I, yeah. I mean, I think it's when when Snowden, someone... Uh, oh, sorry. Please go ahead, Snowden. Snowden, we couldn't get support for it. We, it was financed ultimately from France and Germany and Italy, and we got some some small money at the end from the U.S. with a small distributor. I mean, this is the biggest story, one of the biggest stories of our time, and we yeah. couldn't get support from any of the studios. We went to all of them. Well, people are terrified of it. That tells you a lot about what a mess we're in. We don't even have the guts to, to talk about stuff. We, we, we shut up. We censor ourselves. We self-censor. Uh, yeah. In the, I don't, in the 1980s, on 90s, I probably could have gotten it financed, but not now. Well, it's such a tense time, and that, that issue is so polarizing, and I don't understand how it isn't. I, I don't how, understand how it doesn't have universal support by American citizens. That th th this story needs to be told. I mean, even when he was discussed um, as a podcast guest, yeah. a lot of people were saying you should really stay away from that. They don't understand. They think he's some kind of Russian agent. It's crazy. You know, he's very been very clear about it. Well, he's. It's very clear when you listen to all of the interviews with yeah. him, and and then when I got a chance to talk to him myself, he is who he says he is. Exactly, a Boy Scout. Yeah, I mean, he has a story, and it's a spectacular one, and it's uh, it's one of the most important historical moments of our time that we recognize that this overwhelming surveillance state has uh, has existed without us even knowing it. And cyber warfare, too, it raises the whole issue of who's doing what to who. You know, right. We were very quick to say, they're doing that to us, China, Russia, this, that, they're doing their steel, blah, 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 blah. How, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs>